So biosecurity is very important because this is the only way you can safeguard and it needs to be implemented because if it is not implemented and you carry out your activities, you might infect the birds. So before you even enter into the farm at all, you need to ensure that you have your biosecurity being implemented. You need your biosecurity to be in place and some of the biosecurity, some of the things that are required for the biosecurity are your sanitizer for hand wash before you enter. Try to change the, the you try to change your wares and all your food. One of the most mistakes some of this, most of the farms engage in is this, because they have farms close by to the settlement and there are a lot of farms around, there is opportunity to move during the evening to have engagement together. And when the engagement happens over at evening, it affects, it affects the, they the, 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 the have cross, cross infection happen because they can pick up infection from a particular farm over, sleep over in their own in their own lodge and by the next morning they just jump into the penthouses and start rubbing or trying to pick things which could have brings about infection so the first thing to do and to engage in at every day is to first implement biosecurity you do your biosecurity check and you implement biosecurity it's very very important so for your daily routine the day does not start without biosecurity implementation so that is why it's very important that you wake up early the, the workers wake up early so they won't be in rush and to just want to rush into the pen they must ensure no matter how hasty they are they must ensure that they observed biosecurity proceedings. So from biosecurity proceeding, the second thing that is very, very important on your daily activities, your daily routine, is that you need to observe the beds. Once you enter, you need to observe the beds, just as the way um, someone, Mr. King Sawyer and Emmanuel said that the other time, you need to observe the beds. You need to make use of your five senses when you are trying to observe. The first thing that you need to do, you need to make use of your eyes to see, to see what am I seeing? Is there anything that is abnormal? Is there anything that is unusual? Is there something that it's not in place. Do you have five chicken in a cell or four chicken in a cell? And now you are now seeing just two chicken inside a cell. So you can know that someone has entered or can you just see that some beds are, are cuddling together? There are activities that best should be doing anytime, any day, whenever you get there. One best should be eating, best should be playing, best should be drinking. Beds should be resting, but beds should not be cuddling or cuddling or being in an isolation. So when beds are cuddling and they are not doing fine, that means there is an issue. So you need to use your eyes to see and to know that, oh, things are not okay. Another thing about the senses is that you need to use your ear to ear to know that, oh, oh am I hearing anything unusual from these beds? Uh, the best making sounds that are not too okay. Uh, this, uh, 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 are they making some sounds, sneezing? Are they sneezing? Are they making a cackle sounds like <coughs> you, you, you need to check out? Are they sneezing? You need to pay attention to that. The other thing also is that you need to make use of your nostri to sense if there is any odor or anything that is not okay. Is the ammonia level too high? Uh, can, can you, once you can perceive odor in the penthouse, that means that the odor is already offensive to your beds. Let me repeat this again. Once you can perceive the odor, know that it's already doing harm to your beds. So you should not perceive the odor. When the odor is high, that the ammonia level is extremely high. So you need to train your nose to detect that. Uh, 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 is the place smelling? Is, the, is it choky? 
and you also use your hand to also feel. Let me just share one example, an experience. I visited a farm that complained about a drastic drop in production and then um, they've been having issues with production over time. And when we visited the farm and we tried to look at everything happening on the farm, and it was very funny to see that the birds were not actually hitting. They were all busy scratching their body and the attendant did not even pay attention to see that. So, 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 so the, 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 the thing that we now had to do was to, to look and we have to aim to bring out those birds and we use our hand to observe and to check. And by the time we look through, we were able to see lice infestation. The birds were critically infested with lice and they were busy scratching their body as against eating. So by critical observation, you'll be able to see this. And from observation, you need to now, once you are checking, you need to also use that opportunity to look out for mortality. There are farms whereby you will see mortality of five, six, 10 days inside the pen, inside the cell is very, very bad. On a daily basis, remove out your mortality so that there will not be a source of infection back to the vet. The other thing that you need to do is while you are observing and checking, you need, if you are using a nipple drinker, you need to try as much as possible to check if the nipple lines are not blocked because blocked nipple line can cost you a lot. I remember a scenario whereby a farmer called me on a Sunday afternoon that he had mortality of more than, um, more than 50 within a pen of that has capacity of um, 5,000. So losing 50 just in a day is huge. And after all investigation and everything, it was just because a boy was in haste to go and watch match the previous day evening. He went to go and watch a match and he mistakenly locked the, 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 the water source. So the, the bed didn't have water from morning till that afternoon when those beds died. So you need to check the nipples. Are the nipples working? Are the beds having access to water? Is it functional? So you need to check that. The other thing is this, all the, most of the cages have levelers attached to them. All these levelers needs to be watched every day. We need to pay attention to water quality because water that you cannot drink, you should not give your beds. And container that you cannot use to drink water, don't give your beds. So, so this is very important because most of the time people have recurring infections on their farms and they need to use antibiotics over time. And they discover that when they are using antibiotics, the farm is okay. Once they take off the antibiotics, everything comes back again. So we need to pay critical attention to water quality, washing of the water levelers, the small thing attached to it needs to be washed. We need to always pay attention to that. The other part of it is um, feeding of the birds. Yes, feeding is um, very important. And when we are feeding, we need to pay attention to some critical things. We need to pay attention. We must feed at the right time. We must feed to the right place, the right quantity, and the right quality. Let me repeat it. The right time, right quantity, right quality, and the right place. There are times farmers, their, um, their attendants are feeding and half of the feed is already on the floor because they are in haste. They just drop their, they just drop their feed, the feed and I just drop it and it just make things just go like that. So it's essential. We must pay attention that it's to the right place. The feed goes to the right place. The feed is being fed at the right time, the right quantity, and right quality. So if you now multiply the five grams that you have lost per day, by the time you accumulate it together, it could be more than a bag. And you can be saying you are losing, you are losing money and everything. So if you look at that one bag, that one bag is more than 6,000 Naira. So the right place is very important. And the next thing which is yes, obvious is that if you are doing the layers production, you need to pick up your hex and Lightning, um, commercial layers need at least 16 hours of lightning per day 
for effective uh, production. So we need to ensure that we have the right lightning in place. And the day activities does not end without record. The day activities must not end without recording. The day activities must not end without recording. It must be recorded. Whatsoever activities that has been carried out for the day must be recorded. Whatsoever activities that is being carried out for the day must be recorded. So we must ensure that uh, all the activities for the day is recorded. All the activities for the day is recorded. We must ensure that we record all the activities for the day. All the activities. So if you, if you, if you administer antibiotics, it should be recorded. If you, if you feed, what is the grammage of feed? And the essence of record is so that it can help you to make the necessary changes that you, it's been required. So like, let's say like you have 1,000 beds and you are feeding them five bags. If there have been mortality over time and now it's not more 1,000 beds, that means that there is a need for you to reduce the feed based on the record that you have. But if you don't have record, you cannot keep track, you might not make the necessary changes and adjustments. And also on a daily basis, it depends on the activities you have. At times there might be need to medicate, but please note that it's not everything that requires drugs and it's not every time you need to medicate. So let your medication be as described by, prescribed by the laboratory or after a culture and sensitivity or under supervision of a veterinary or animal scientist, animal health practitioner. Please don't just make use of drugs and habit. If you look at the slide, they, they can help us out. You will see some of a particular farm we visited that uh, does not have a cover for their drinkers, for their water drinkers. No, no cover. And the cups are filled up with slimes. They don't wash it and everything is filled up with slime. What we have is filled up with slime. So it is essential if you have this kind of system, you need to wash it on a daily basis and ensure that you cover your drinkers. The next picture will show you that of a mortality that has been in a penthouse over time and nobody cares to remove it. Nobody cares about the mortality. It's gotten rotten there and nobody's planning to, to remove it. So now let's move to weekly activities. What are the things that we should do weekly on our fans? One thing that is very essential that I will still lay emphasis on is the issue of water and we need to wash our tanks on a weekly basis. We should not negotiate that. No matter how high or low the tank is or so small, we must find a way to always wash it. The other one is litters management. We must always try as much as possible to pack our litters. Now, you know, there are times when we try as much as possible to prevent diseases on our own farm, whereby the next neighbor might be careless about his or our own farm. So that calls for oh, weekly, we need to have an area spraying of disinfectant so that it can reduce the bacterial load around the environment, reduce bacterial load, viral load, and even fungal load around the environment. So area spraying of disinfectant is very important. Cleaning of roof and nets must be done too to avoid cobwebs. Um, my, one of my boss used to make one um, um, jokes and say, chicken does not need internet connection. So there is no need for cobwebs. They don't do WWW. So can, can, you can see a farm that has um, webs all over. And when you are packing your litters, you need to ensure that you are packing it away from your farm, not directly. You know, these are the practice some of us do. We use the litters and use it to farm within the farm premises again. But it's not too high because some of the diseases that after being treated, they are being out, they are being passed out through the feces. So putting it around will litter the environment and still make the bacteria or the virus to be resident in your farm. See this farm now, they have a very bad hygiene. They pack the litters, but the litters is being packed close to the feed. So no matter how these litters, we still have a way to seep in into the feed and they will still feed the beds with this same feed. And the farm will be complaining about having reoccurring infection. So we need to pay attention. 
there is, if you look, some of us have a very bad cage system, which the beds defecate on each other. So there is also a need to always scrape that, to always scrape it. No matter how on a weekly basis, there must be effort must be made to ensure that these things are being cleaned. You can see that this farm has um, litters all over and the beds that are under, we have the opportunity to eat these beds, to eat these fecals, which makes them to always continually be on antibiotics. There are farms, they have this culture, they say, ah, hey, every month we must use drug. It's not compulsory that you use drug every month. You will not have to use drug every month if you follow the best routine practices. I consult for a farm and for the past one and a half years, we've not actually used antibiotics. It's strange to some people telling them that the farm doesn't use antibiotics. So please, this kind of system is not too good. We always try to ensure that you clear up the litters. Yeah. And moving forward from the weekly routine, let's check for the monthly routines. What are the things that we should do on a monthly basis? Monthly basis, I'll still go back to the issue of water. We cannot overflow the issue of water. Water is Thank very you, I I and, I and, and that is why yeah, we always have this song by Fela. I say, water, you know, get enemy. So water doesn't have enemy, but water can be an enemy to you if you don't treat it well. So we need to dislime our water pipeline. Water pipeline needs to be dislimed effectively on a monthly basis and last week uh, we discussed about how to dislime a water pipeline you can make use of isoplot to dislime at um, one tablet to every 20 liters and it's been done at night so when it's night so, so to allow the water with the concentrated isoplot will be will be inside the pipeline so that will be we told the our holding hour of like um four to five hours so that it can dislime all the slimes and then take it out. So after six hours, you open the, the outlet so that the water can be flushed out. But you might engage in this more than once in a month if you use vitamins a lot in your water. If you use vitamins a lot in your water, you might need to dislime more than once so you can make your disliming two times in a month. The warming, if applicable for that month that you are in, because the warming can be done every three, three months. And vaccination, vaccination, some have done vaccination to every three, three weeks and the like. Vaccination should be based on the, the pressure of the virus around your location. So vaccination varies from location to location. And another thing that can help with the uh, issue of vaccination is Serum monitoring to check, and this can be done in a laboratory to check whether the beds are due for the Lasota, they are due for the vaccine you want to give them or not. And for 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 this, you, you need to collect some blood samples from the beds to do that. But if not that, if you don't have the facility close by to you, you just need to understand the feed virus challenge in that your environment. Uh, 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 you need to understand how often does uh, the challenge happen in this place? Do other farmers have problem of, um, let's say now for La Sotana, if you're in a place where um, there is always frequent challenge of Newcastle, then um, your La Sota can come in every four, four weeks or five, five weeks. But it depends on the environment, the feed challenge in that area, and also based on laboratory advice or your veterinary doctor's advice. Another thing which is very, very important on a monthly basis or seasonal basis, you need to do maintenance. You need to check, are your cages okay? Uh, the feeders in the intact or they're already bending? Because if the feeders are bending, that means there will be wastage of feed and the bed will not eat well. So you need to also put into consideration maintenance and apart from the issue of maintenance and uh, other thing that is very very essential especially if you are a farm owner is stock taking take your stock before you pay the salary 
so that you can know whether you are still intact, so that you won't be thinking you have um, 50,000 beds when the best you have is actually 45,000. Boys have fab some out of the out of the cages. So you you check it out before payment of salary. You check it out before giving incentives, so that you can know that yes, you you are in line, and you check it out so that you can make a decision for for the next month. So you can make a projection because you need to make projection for 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 the month. Every farm needs to plan. So planning should be part of our routines too. We need to make plans. We need to make budget. We need to anticipate and to do all this, you need to take stock and you need to take record. The other time I said, your day activities has not ended if you have not done your recording. Recording is very, very important. So now, most of the problems we are facing on the farm, we throw antibiotics at them. We throw drugs at them. We throw, throw vaccines at them. But some of them has just simple management issue that has to do with our routine. And we should stop looking at how to solve problem at resort level. We need to look at how to solve problem at system level. And at system level, it has to do with our routine. We need to ensure that we try all our possible best to maintain good hygiene system, good water system, make the pen conducive for the beds. With good management system, welfare, water, feed, and environment, you will do less of drugs, which will save you a lot of cost, and it will help you in the performance of your beds too. Because when the beds are okay, they give you the best. What you put in is what you get. And for you to get the best, you need to put in the best. And for you to put in the best, you must follow a set line. And the set line is your routine. Nothing happens suddenly. It's over time. And permit me to tell you today, the success of your farm is in your hand and it's based on how you do your routine. If you want to change the success story of your farm, change the routine practices of your farm. What we really need to change are the systems that are causing problems on our farms. And when we solve problems at system level, we solve it finally. But when we solve problems at resort level, we just solve it temporarily. In order to improve your farm profitability, you need to solve the problem at system level, which entails more of the routine practices. Remember, a slight change in your practice, a slight change like cleaning the penthouse, a slight change like proper feeding, a slight change like desliming, a slight change like washing the water line and covering of the water system can take your farm to another different destination, destination of profitability, destination of improvement. And let me pause here and um, hand over to Dr. Agbato. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Dr. Lamide, it's been wonderful having you speak the last 45 minutes uh it's a good one but uh before i allow you to take a breather finally the the weather is changing and i know many farmers on this call have lots of questions to ask we'll get to that very soon get your question andy if you have questions you can use the raise and button so that we can call on you as soon as possible don't forget you should please write your name the way you want it to appear on your certificate your email address and your phone number together your name the way you want to appear on certificate, your email address and your phone number in the chat box. We'll pick it up from there and get your certificate to you as soon as possible. Now, Dr. Lavendi, before I allow you to take a breather, the weather is changing. And on this call, we have farmers from both the northern part of the country and southern part of the country. And I'm very sure many farmers are already asking, they're asking themselves, they're looking inward 
with the drastic change in in the weather is that something i should look out for what should i what should i be doing by now but before i allow you go to that i want to recognize the presence uh, of the following people while you are taking a breather uh person of Dr. Tayo Banjoko, Dr. Lufunke Oluwale, Mrs. Azwa as regular, Dr. Vivian Okowe, you're cited. Mr. Uh, Shorunke Adekunle, yes, we recognize your presence. Dr. Adisa and all, we will get to that. So I want you guys to also be on hand because this conversation we'll be having is not only for Dr. Lamide, but Dr. Lamide, I'd like you to look into this very quickly. The weather is changing what should farmers do? Remember, we have both broilers and we have both layer farmers on this call. We also have some breeder farmers here as well. So what's your advice to us going into the other phase of the weather? Thank you. As the weather is changing, um, it comes with a lot of effects and impact on um, livestock. And one of it is, even it's already happening here in the north, people are already complaining about dropping production and having high mortality. So the best thing to do in this particular time is to have handy what can um, to always engage in area spraying for so that it can reduce. The first thing is to reduce the pressure of bacteria and viral load within the environment where your beds are. So area spraying of disinfectant will help because by this time around, there is a challenge on the bed. The immune system is low. So if there is any disease around, any bacteria around, it can easily affect them. So area spraying will be of, of, of a great help. Two is that they should have heat management system in place. They can make use of if the farm has provision of foggers. Once they have a thermometer in place and they could see that the beds, the thermometer, the temperature is increasing, all the beds are panting because the beds to themselves are also a good cardinal uh, uh, sign for us. So what are, if they are panting, we can make use of, um, of um, foggers for them so that they can actually reduce the body temperature for them. Uh, also, because this weather is also, is, also having some symptom of haziness, which could cause respiratory issues. So the use of um, a mental solutions like mentofin, mentofort can be used. This will help to reduce the incidence of respiratory challenge to the bed. It's not advisable to use antibiotics because the beds are stressed. Antibiotics are not anti-stressor. So it's better to get anti-stressor if you think your beds are stressed or give them um, electrolytes. Please, in this season that we are moving into, it's not season of abuse of antibiotics, but it's a season of responsible management. Thank you so much. Oh, that's a good one. I, I would like Dr. Tayo Banjoko to, to also jump in on that question. Now let's, let's speak from Dr. Banjoko. Dr. Banjoko, Please unmute yourself. Let's hear from you. Farmers are here. And uh, at, this fora, at this forum, we are trying to look into solving problems together. So Dr. Banjoko, over to you. You can unmute yourself, please. Okay, I'm unmuted. You caught me. <laughs> okay, can you come again? What do you want me to jump in on? Dapo. Oh, the, the weather is changing. The, the weather is is changing gradually all over the country. Um, to some parents in rain every day, uh, easy, easy weather in the morning, in the evening, it rains. The weather keeps spiking. So what do you think farmers should know at this point as regards to routine activities and farming generally? Poultry farmers. Remember, we have both layer farmers, broiler farmers, even commercial breeder, uh, breeder farmers are also a part of the call. Over to you. Okay. Um, what they should know now is to double up their biosecurity measures. They should double it up. Now, like what Olamide has said, um, they need anti-stress. We shouldn't um, abuse antibiotics. For instance, now, during this period, we are going to be having a lot of polluted water. The water table will be polluted at the moment. So, the quality of water that they would be using might be a little bit not too good. So they need to pay attention to their water. When they take bad water over time, 
Olamide has mentioned the slamming and the likes. But if they do that, at least it will limit the accumulation of debris that will cause problem. Then they need to pay attention to, um, I call it um, supportive therapy. So routinely they should spray. Routinely they should also um, take oral um, mental drugs, then immunomodulators. Immuno, immunomodulators, because I, I was just looking at them. Um, there was a farm in um, Bielsa. It was um, complaining about them dealing with um, avian influenza and flood. So he did a video of him um, having to dispose his birds. So um, in this instance that we know that we'll be dealing with things like this. So things like... Um, um apart from i'm looking for the word there's a name we call it it's it could be immuno disinfectant the spraying of disinfectants with mental fin and they should also take immunomodulators and pay attention to their water pay attention to their water because if they don't it's likely they come down with what we call gyri disease gyri disease is a kind of condition that replicates what we call um fibroid in human being this debris and slime, um, they begin to form a gigantic mass there. If it's not quickly nipped in the board, all those, um, the plate can go over to the uh, um, the SR area and cause what we call um, CRD. You could you would see thick plugs that will cover them up. So in a situation where it extends to the lungs, the, S, the SR areas, the, you will even lose the buzz before you even see the signs of gyrary disease or what may I call it fibroid, fibroid in, in birds. So basically my take, I, I'm there as taking care of the rest, but they should pay attention to their water because the water table is, has been polluted. So they need to um, disinfect their water daily um, sanitize it daily, then routinely the slime. I think that's it. That's it. Okay. Uh, there's a question in the chat box. Um, Dr. Lamide, uh, the question in the chat box states that, is it true that pathogenic bacteria are more prevalent in the wet season? And if this is true, what should farmers do? The oh, question oh, okay. is that Dr. Dr. Tayo possibly answered that question when she said the table water, because during rainy season, there are erosions, floods, and everything which contaminates the water. And there is one thing that the birds consume, birds consume times two of feed as water. So once they have this continually, and even just one coliform unit of um, the organism over time, continuously will bring them down. So if, the, if that is the, the angle, the, there might be more issues of uh, infection, but the best way is to emphasize on the issue of water management and your IG management, biosecurity, water management. So water is key. Water is key. Some of the major problems we have in poultry production is either from bad water, bad feed, or bad environment. So if we can take care of this, we will have less of the issues. Uh, jump on because people are talking about water management, water management, water management, and you talk about using water sanitizers to farmers. We need to stress something. If I have to do vaccination, what is the place of vaccination and water sanitizer? How do I combine it? Farmers need to know. Uh, maybe I allow Dr. Tyler to speak on that. Dr. Tyler. Oh, Dr. is the head of animal care laboratory services in Lagos. So he experienced dealing with diseases and the likes. Which is not there. Dr. Lamide, please, can you answer, can you answer that question, please? Okay. okay. Um, for use of anti and, um, um, water sanitizer and um, vaccination, when it's time for vaccination, it's advisable not to use water sanitizer in day where you want to vaccinate because it's not actually compatible. It can actually neutralize the vaccine. So water, san water sanitizer should not be used on days when vaccination needs to be carried out. 
uh, this vaccination we are referring to, what if I have to carry out uh, vaccinations that are not oral? Do I need to also skip uh, water sanitizer if the vaccination is meant to be injectable? Uh, probably I'm using IM or I'm using sub -Q to inject some vaccines. Uh, do I still need to keep or skip the use of water sanitizer a day before and a day after vaccination? Okay, it's not only even an issue of water sanitizer. Let me also say that uh, when you are using disinfectant in water, like um, polydine, it's very important. Polydine or iodine solution is very important not to vaccinate at that particular point. Give some gaps, like a um, three days gap before any vaccination, because this can also neutralize. But in cases of um, vaccination injectable, you can actually still make use of your water sanitizer. But to be on a safer side, you can skip it for that day. But majorly, live vaccine are what uh, water sanitizer, because they have chlorine, can actually affect because they cause destabilization of the vaccine and they can cause neutralization. So it's actually more applicable to live vaccines. So to the house, if you have a question for Dr. Lamide, you can raise your hand so that uh, we can identify you and ask you to unmute yourself and ask your question directly. I have a question in the chat box. Someone said, my friend had four mortalities out of three capacity. Uh, at your team, Manuel, where's your location? Your location is not stated so that we can advise you appropriately. We can't do diagnosis on the call. Diagnosis can't be made on the call because that is not how to diagnose in the first place. So sorry about that. That we can't be diagnosed by them. Okay, you can you can call the number up on the on the message after the call. We can talk about it if you are in the bottom. So someone said, "Good evening, right, sir. sir. Can you help us with a recorded version?" Okay. To, yes, that there will be a, a replay of this of this talk on Monday, and if you look out look out for Belefu on YouTube, you will have snippets of this call on. on YouTube page. Also, you have that of our, and also like the uh, click for notification so that new videos pops up, you get notified immediately. It will be on our page on YouTube and you will have access to it so that you can always go back to reflect on which we posted tonight on our YouTube page. The snippet is out. You will love it. It's, if you have not seen it, then I don't know. I don't know what you are doing in the, in the poetry sector. So any other question? If you have a question, please, you can raise your hand. Yes, there I is a question. Uh, I would like to... Okay, go ahead. There is a question by Salami Baba today. Uh, it's about the rain okay, in water level table now and which has made contamination all over with um, the boreholes, wells, and everything. So how can we go about it? And that calls for daily sanitization of your water like using a um, water sanitizer to ensure that um, they can kill the bacteria, they can neutralize the bacteria and the water will be safe for the best to drink. So it's during this period, emphasize more on the use of water sanitizer. Okay. Now, Dr. Lamide, how is it possible to... Farmers have one problem with cobwebs. And it's evident when you go to France, you, you always see cobwebs. Is it normal farm to be without cobwebs? Also, adding to that question, cobwebs in our farms. Oh, sorry, the network was fluctuating when you were asking the question, but I could I get... Said, is, is it, it possible, possible for poultry farmers to, to be without cobwebs on their farm? And what, what are the adverse effects of having cobwebs on the farm? Mm -hmm. After that, um, maybe in addition to that, is to speak on rats, having rats on the farm as well. Thank you. 
Okay, the issue of cobwebs has to do with management. Um, if you have a good management on the farm, you will have less of cobwebs on the farm. Uh, just that um, if, if I know that this kind of question will pop up, I'll have snapped myself in different farms and show you the farms without cobwebs. <laughs> so that I can see that farms can actually do without cobwebs. And because cobwebs also serve as, they, 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 you know, some farms, you see some farms, cobwebs all over the side net and it's very dusty cobwebs everywhere and when there is a lot of it covers the flow of years that year can breeze cannot breeze cannot even enter inside the penthouse and it has a lot of impact during the heat period that there will be a lot of heat within the penthouse so it have that and also it can also serve as a as, as a source of a hello it can, also, it can also serve as a source of infection too, because it can, when the dust are much, it can also cause respiratory issues too. Okay, that's a question. That's a question in the chat box as well. So, what is important of the practice of mixing milk with water when mixing live vaccines. That was a question in the chat box. Did you get that, Dr. Lamiri? Yeah, yes, yes. It's it's issue of also chlorine because they believe them. It's believe when you are not suffering of the of the chlorine status of um, of the water, so you use milk so that it can um, can cause like a stabilizer so that it can stabilize and then um, it will not bring about issue of neutralization to the vaccine. So that is why we had milk to to vaccination to the vaccine water. To vaccinate and there is another question in there talking about having beds that are 30 weeks and their production is not encouraging that is why we always lay emphasis on uniformity if you have a uh, growing beds if you are brooding beds from all sets you must ensure that they have uniformity because they don't have uniformity once some will come to lay earlier than the other and some might be laggard, so which might actually affect your profitability. So for now, what you can do is not to start using drugs to see that they will come to live. What you should do is to first check the weight of the bed. Uh, they up to 1.5 kg. If they are not up to 1.5 kg, you might still need to get them to that point by using amino-based multivitamin. But the person can chat me up later so that we can take this to the next level on what are the other issues that could be responsible and how we can take that. Yeah, Emmanuel Alobo, if your bots are, in addition to what Dr. Lamidi has said, your bots are 30 weeks and you are getting 50%, uh, there are two things you need to, to observe. Uh, what's your, what's the feed consumption rates that these bots are having per day. What's the system that you are also running? Are you using, are you using the depleter system or you are running the battery case system? If you're running the battery case system, it's easier to know bots that are not feeding or not consuming adequately. But if you're running the depleter system, that may be difficult to know. So you need to check out this. What kind of feed are you giving them? If else is not a challenge. If health is not a challenge, they need to look into the feed and water consumption. If these are perfect, if you don't have to complain about the bots that you are having. If that is not perfect yet, uh, it still boils down to your management. However, at 60% production, are you in profit? That's the question somebody is asking. Uh, you are on, somebody said, you are running at a loss already, sir, 50% production. Yes, with the cost of feed at the moment, it's difficult to run a farm on 50% production. You need nothing less than 70% production before you can talk about making little profit. So you need to run your farm at least on 75% and above. If not, you will be having issues on your farm. Dr. Adisa, your hand is up. Let's listen to you, please. You have the floor. Am I audible now? Yes, you are. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, just to add to the question that was asked uh, as regards uh, the production level, um, fine, you, look, you talk about the feeding regimen and the weights. Those two are very, very vital. And likewise, uh, what is the, the warming 
um, status. How often you deworm those birds? Because if if one if if uh, birds are having worms, and as well there are, there are there are some ectoparasite on the body, those can be a signal or pointer to low production, um, to that effect, and also to talk basically just uh, a kind of an addition to what uh, Dr. Lamede has said earlier on, as regards we're talking about the routine farm activities for optimal performance, and uh, I will just want to uh, throw more light with regards to water. You know, everything is talking about water, water. And we can say with the flood and the climate change that is happening, so many uh, flood over the places and uh, which has really affected the routine and the management of some farms. And uh, like I said, that. Uh, uh, to guide against that, you know, you need to take proper management of your water level. And I've seen some farms that even as they are pumping uh, their water from the borehole or from or from where, no whichever way, just see straight to the uh, the bucket or the bowl. You know, there is no reservoir. I believe there should be a reservoir where you provide all the waters and you can as well monitor and treat those uh, water from that uh, avenue. Not that as you are just pumping from, from the well straight, the bears are taken. And like I used to tell farmers that uh, anytime you visit, no matter how small uh, the farm is, whether you are still under 200 or 100 uh, capacity, the water you cannot take drink don't give it to the birds because if you as human you see the water is not fit it's not awesome to be taken and you are given to the bird in, in a way it may lead or cause some problem so like i used to tell farmers that each uh, water you usually give to the bed should be water that you as a farmer yourself you can just take your glass cup and go to the water uh, uh, tap and just have a sip of it Thank you. Thank you very much. Dr. Vivian Uri, let's hear from you. Potakot and poultry farming. How viable? I was I was told that the, the hawk poultry, the hawk poultry product in Potakot, like the hawk uh, beef in the southwest. Now that we have flood affecting that region, what, how is poultry business there? What was the experience like? Let's hear from you. Dr. Vivian. Good evening, everyone. Am I audible? You are very audible, ma'am. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Agbato, and everyone on this call. Um, Portacourt right now, let me say Portacourt City is still okay concerning the flood for now. It's, um, you know, it's coming from Bayesa, so it's still somehow at the, at the boundary for now. And then on the issue of, um, let me also talk about the flood. The flood from Bayesa, we have we have had um, um, like um, um, intelligence about in Bayesa right now that there have been some strange no, no, um, mortalities and it's been on the increase with farmers over there in Bayesa. And right now, Portacos is trying to, you know, put things in check now, you know, telling our farmers here to be, you know, very, very cautious, observant, also top up on their biosecurity measures because you never can tell what the flood can bring down here. Then again, about um, this issue of um, uh, some, uh, let me say, abokis, uh, of course, they are friends. They, they, they are hawking birds around. Yeah, as in they go, they hawk them and they sell in pieces to, to people around here. Though, yeah, right now, the, the veterinary association, especially NVME, is, um, is actually on the check concerning this. 
they have started getting information about where these beds are coming from because one is to know where they are coming from and also to also stop it because actually it is not it is not good it is not good now um a person can have a store and sell but not hocking them the stress on the bed it's it's no good at all so that's what is actually for now they are still trying to find out where these beds are coming from and and how to put the stop to hocking of these beds and, and because you know um, of course as in you don't even know where they are coming from and you don't know what diseases they are even bringing into the environment so that's what they are we are trying to work on together here in Port Harcourt. Okay, thank, thank, you. thank you very much, Dr. Vivian. Let me let me call on Ifeolua Enoch. He has some question. He's typing on the box. He's a bit confused. It's good to speak out so that we can we can trash it together. Ifeolua Enoch, you have the floor. If you're Lua Enoch, are you there? Okay, Dr. Lai, yes, uh, you say? Okay, yeah, go ahead, please. Um, Given of glucose, they hold at, at, at their first day, I, I, I mean, after the arrival. So there was a time I went for a program in which I was advised that it is not ideal, that it do increase their energies more than normal. So well, I was still there. Are you there? Did you get that? Probably from something like that. You shut it oh. down. It does lead to mortality. So I was still there because due to the glucose given at the start, that that is what caused. So I was a bit confused. So I was like, in a program like this, I will, I will, I will try to have. Okay. Dr. Lamide, do you want to answer that? Okay. Um, actually, most farmers use glucose as an stressor for their beds and arrival because, um, but actually, on, on, on technical grounds, when beds arrive, they should. It depends on where the beds are coming from because when beds move a long distance, they, they will be stressed and you might want to give them an anti stressor. So anti-stressor is still ideal and better than just bombarding them with antibiotics. Because when beds arrive, the first thing most farmers does is, oh, beds have arrived, which antibiotics should I use? So, but it's not about antibiotics. So anti-stressors are still okay. It doesn't affect their, their, their life or their, make them to die. It's, it's reduced the level of stress in them. So I don't really get that aspect of it. It makes them okay. have energy. Uh, the other question is asking, the question is asking now is that, can he, is glucose ideal for him as an anti-stressor? Dr. Lavendi, are you there? Hello? That is glucose ideal for him to use for DOTX on arrival as anti stressor. Glucose, not antibiotics. Glucose. Not, an, and not antibiotics. You can use glucose or uh, other anti stressors like um, stress stroke and the likes if the beds are stressed. If they have to, because most of the times, like, let's say, up north, they, we have less archery here. So beds have to move from. Um, southwest down to hope not, so the beds could be stressed due to transportation stress and the likes. So it's still ideal rather than using antibiotics. Okay. I, I get the, uh, uh, the person got the, the question is clear now. So I have another question in the chat box. Uh, let me call on Ruth Omotayo to ask a question directly. Ruth Omotayo, you have the floor. Okay, good evening. Uh, I guess the question is talking about um, interest rate a broiler farmer can propose to potential investors annually. Okay, uh, if, if I get a question right, uh, Ruth Amontayo, you're talking about somebody starting a, a business uh you're looking for investors into to go into your broiler farm yes 
Okay. Let's say their I, I person is coming to like um, um, saying they, they are interested in investing. Okay, they are interested in investing in your business. Yes. Now, let me quickly tell you one thing for broiler business. Yeah, the, the ideal thing is to make at least 10 percent profits per cycle. Yes, that is the ideal make 10 percent mm -hmm. profit per cycle. Now, it's not left to you to determine how many percent you want to give to your investor. Okay. Do you understand? Uh, we, can't, we can't help you with that because we don't know other factors that are in addition to what you are doing. But you can discuss with okay. Belefu at the end of this call. In the, in the message okay. sent to you, there's a number attached to it. You can discuss directly with them. They can guide you on how to okay. go about, about that. Um, okay. What should a farmer who's about to purchase POL look for? Pumiga uh, Ankole, can you ask this question directly? Pumiga Ankole, are you there? Okay, um, to save time, um, the person is actually asking what are the things to check out for when you are buying a um, point of lay? And okay. one okay. thing is very key, you don't buy beds based on age, you buy them based on weight. That is weight. the first thing. So don't buy beds based on age, buy based on weight. So um, no, we have point of lay, we have point of cage. Point of lay should be from 16 weeks upward and it should have almost be attaining 1.5 kg body weight. So you look at that, you look also at uniformity at the beds uniform because if some are having the weights, having the required weight and the others are not having, they may have issues of um, late performance and they might not eventually reach the peak because when ones are already at the peak, the others are just coming in to join. And when the others are not already at the peak, the other one is sliding down. So, so you need to look out for uniformity and you need to look out for health history of the beds. Um, are all vaccination completed and is there any history you know there are times people don't plan to sell their beds as point of lay but maybe they've had issues maybe they have an outbreak and they decided oh to cut our loss let's transfer the risk to another person so you must actually try to understand if the beds are actually LD and also history so of okay invariably you have to get your, your boss from reputable sources yes Okay, I, I guess that is clear to uh, Bumiba and Kole. Uh, let me allow Mrs. Azwa to express some comments on stock taking. Uh, I know she's in, Mrs. Azwa too has, has been a, a long term farmer. In fact, if you know her history very well, it, it goes way, way back to, back to our days in schools. So, Mrs. Azwa, what, what's your take? Stock taking by farmers. Uh, Dr. Lam, they said farmers should take stock before paying salary. Let's hear from you. Mrs. Azua, please. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. From a personal experience, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hello. Okay. We can hear you. From personal experience, I will say that's just the best to do. You take stock before you pay salaries. I made a big mistake when I started the um, poultry business. And that is to just allow my farm ants to continue to run the farm while I would just be taking records with the number of uh, animals, the best that I can see on the farm, not knowing that Every Sunday, when I go to church, they will tell me they will go to the nearby church so that they can move back to the farm on time. And while I'm, I'm away, they will sell us some and they will pocket it. But I realized that the number of eggs we were getting were reducing by the day. Until one day, I decided to do this. And anytime I tell them, we are going to take stock. They will make me believe that it's a very Euclidean task that we cannot do. So I just made up my mind one day that we are going to do that. And when we counted the beds, beds of about 1,950, we counted less than 1,000. 
In fact, I feel like crying as I'm saying it again now. So, if you want to go into farming, you better learn how to have the time, the energy, the passion, and the agbari, let me use that word, the smartness. Because these guys that are working with you, they do not send you. What they are only seeing is that eggs are rolling in, beds are getting ready. They, don't, they have forgotten that you are buying feed and it is as a cost. And you actually paid money too for getting those beds. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much, man. So every farmer should have Agbari. Agbari is being street smart, being street smart, having native intelligence. If not, you will be caught yes. in the corner. <laughs> yeah. Yes, uh, Doctor, let me give a question on here that says that um, how do we eradicate rats on farm? He said we have used cat gum, as in rat gum, poison, yet no effect. Kindly advise us. I want to believe that uh, what she's having is uh, a reinfestation. Re Dr. Lamide, over to you. We, we, uh, we just dealt with something like this um, last week. And that is why I'm smiling. Um, the farm has, uh, the farm has um, reoccurring issues and it has been recurring lice infestation. Dr. Lamide, you're breaking. I don't know okay. if you switch your network. Okay, the farm was having issues of recurring lice infestation and it was traceable to the rat. And eventually, what we have to do is to set trap all over, multiple traps. Every angle the rat will pass through. So they got the message and that's how we're able to get rid of the rats. It's not easy, actually. But with persistency, every corner that you know that they hide, all their hideouts put a trap. So the way forward is to set trap for them all through and do physical trapping for your rats. Uh, if, you, if you do poisoning for rats, uh, it's always difficult because you're also endangering people around. Some rats are so smart that they will pull the poisoned bait into the environment. And if you have your dogs around or you have other pets around, they are also exposed. So it's always good to trap which is not the usual rat that we all know. Probably, you also remove closures, as in you try and take away all openings into your pen. Mets or nets, guide, guide your door, be sure that you screen out rodents from entering access to your pen. If that is done, then the rats you are dealing with may be human rats and not physical rats. Maybe you are only seeing the effect of the rat and not the rat itself. Uh, using cat to evacuate rats is difficult in poultry pen. You can do that in your feed store because some rats will start to Okay, Dr. Dr. Lamide, I would like you to attend to this question. The question states that a poultry farm uh, has, been, has been having issue of uh, salmonellosis over time. Each time they go to the laboratory, the The result, the result always states that there is salmonella on their farm. Every time, what the report is salmonella, salmonella, salmonella. Can you, can you talk about this? Okay. The other time I said that there are times when farm becomes dependent on antibiotics and have reoccurring disease condition. 
So we need to trace why are they having reoccurring? Is there something bringing about recontamination all the time, reinfection all the time? So we need to check. And also rats too can also be a source. If the farm has a rat that is resident with them all the time, when you finish treating, they will come and do their own again. They will always have. So we need to first um, eliminate the source of reinfection, then do proper treatment. And also in treatment too is... Uh, as uh, we need to look at the most sensitive antibiotics, the antibiotics resistance pattern, and there might be a need to switch. If they are using the uh, same antibiotics in treatment all the time, then there will be a need to change in terms of the one that is also sensitive and non-sensitive pattern. But we there is need for... Is, um, diagnosis is two-way. There is on-site diagnosis to that also helps. So I will advise the farmer to invite a vet to come and check the farm too, so that there can be okay. a total diagnosis. Thank you very much. I'd like to yield some minutes to Dr. Lufunke Oluwale, uh, an erudite animal scientist. Let's, let's pick an angle from her. Dr. Lufunke, let's have some comments from you. Dr. Lufunke, kindly unmute yourself so that we can hear from you. Hello, Dr. Agbato. Thank you for having me there. It's been a wonderful program. Every day is a new thing, and I'm also gaining a lot. From this program, I think uh, that restocking of your bot, um, it's opened my eyes again that so... People can be <laughs> dealing in a terrible way like that, just like Mrs. Azua said the other time. And it makes me to know, <laughs> just as she said, that we have to be smart. So I picked that one. And I'm also encouraging all the farmers to take that thing up, to be smart, and don't let our tenants. To be frank with you, most of us that are farmers and we are working together, the attendants almost ruined us because some of them are not even reliable. Some of them is what they wanted, the money they want to, they don't care about whether you gain or not. So that step uh, again from there and how to sterilize our water and how to take care of our water, I gain a lot and also encourage the farmers to take the step. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Oluwole. Uh, any other question in the house yet unanswered? Okay, let me let me bring up uh, one of Belefu's finest as well. If you don't know, Belefu has a lot of things that we do in Nigeria and all over the world. I would like to call on Oluwashio of Belefu Communication to have some word with us. Mr. Shion, over to you. Yes. Um, thank you, Dr. Dapo Agbato. Thank you for holding on. I want to uh, appreciate everybody for being here. I know it's been a good time here at this training. I'm sure your time has not been wasted at all. Um, as human beings, we keep learning, no matter how much we know. Learning continues till we leave this world. And so I want to again thank Dr. Olami Deagato. <laughs> Uh, looking at your face, you look so much like Dr. Dapo. All right. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for sharing these great insights with us all here. I believe that when next we call on you, you'll be glad to be here. Thank you very much. And so before I, before I uh, close, I want to say that for every one of us who would like to listen to this broadcast, oh, sorry, I said broadcast, where well, it is. <laughs> so this um, training again, you can go to radio.belefu.com. Uh, the rebroadcast of this training will come up on Monday, Monday the 24th of October, 2022. And that will be next week, Monday, of course, at 3 p.m. West Africa time. So all you need to do is just to go to radio.belefu.com and then just click it at 3 p.m. West Africa time. You will have 
a rebroadcast of the edited version of this training. And so you can get to learn more. And of course, to hear what you probably missed while you were away or you didn't um, uh, join the meeting. So uh, in a nutshell, I want to say thank you to everyone. Thank you to all those who made one contribution or the other. And I want to wish us a very wonderful weekend as we uh, all go back to our duty post, wherever we came from. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice weekend. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Thank you, Mr. Shung.